Hey guys, thank you for joining me. So in this video we're going to be talking about tuning your radio specifically for your needs. Uh, and that would be getting rid of this and setting up your gimbal tensions so that they are optimal for whatever you think uh, you need them for. And I'll just show you like general guidelines and then you can make your own assessments because this stuff is all very um, adjustable and customizable. So first of all, we're just going to be talking about this radio, which is the TS-16S, um, because it comes with the detent on, and the detent is on our throttle gimbal. So why we don't want this clickiness in the throttle is when you're running through on a plane uh, or any kind of other collective, or even a helicopter, depending on your situation, usually helicopter guys get rid of the detent as well, but on a plane, it's easy. You can lock it in on a position. Um, and you're at consistent throttle usually a lot of the time, um, but if you're flying 3D it's a little different. But with a drone, we're constantly modulating the throttle going up and down to maintain altitude because of uh, external forces, translational lift, and other effects of just how these things fly through the air. We're usually using throttle a lot and we need it to be as smooth and predictable as possible. So the way to do that is to get rid of this clickiness because sometimes you can be cruising at an altitude and then wow, all of a sudden you're stuck in a click and you're lowering too much and you click up one click and it's too much and you start lifting off the ground. So we're gonna get rid of that and then we're also gonna adjust these gimbal tensions so that it makes life a little bit easier and it's not as much work for us. And actually, the yaw gimbal, you wanna be a little bit tighter so that when you're throttling up and down, it's not accidentally putting inputs in that you don't want and it shows up with FPV. Because actually in FPV, having your stick movements dialed in and making sure they're as precise as they can be is very important because it shows up a lot more when you're actually sitting on the aircraft, which is what we're doing. Um, and it shows up in the HD video and you can really tell a good pilot from a great pilot based on their controls and throttle management and just overall inputs on the sticks. So let's take this thing apart uh, and I'll show you how to adjust these, these things. So first of all, the tools that you're gonna need are a Phillips head, a flathead screwdriver and a 1.5 millimeter hex and then also a 2.5 millimeter hex. So I've kind of already gotten some of these things apart so there are four Phillips head screws in the back of this thing and then there are two 2.5 millimeter screws on the top. Uh, once you do that you're going to want to go ahead and pull this uh, module bay out and then you're also going to want to pull a battery just in case we're in this thing and something touches that we don't need it to touch and then it causes a short. Ultimately, we just go ahead and take the power out um, and it makes our life a lot easier. So, uh, yeah, pull in the battery. This battery that I have in here, this doesn't come with the battery, by the way, but the one that I put in here is an Adrenaline uh, 2S from Thunder Power. It has a barrel connector and an XT60 on it for easy charging and it's a 2S battery and the 2S connection, um, the balance connector is actually what goes in here and um, powers this guy. So this 2000 milliamp works really well. You could go higher in milliamperage uh, and have a longer battery life, but at the end of the day, I think it's a play between too much weight and too little weight and just what works and what doesn't, and that seems to be adequate as far as I've been playing on the sim with this radio for hours at a time and it's not even drained halfway, and it's been that way for multiple, multiple days now. So once we get that off, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these side grips, and they're literally just pull off. So. You peel these guys off. You gotta have a fingernail though. So once we get those off, we are ready to open this radio up. And all we really wanna do is pull the top here and then disconnect the back. And I really like the way that this radio is designed because there's other radios out there like the Tyrannus, the one that I currently use, where when you open it up, there's like connections between both pieces and you're kinda like splayed open like this and it can be uh, a little harder to work with, so this is really nice. So let me uh, set up the camera and we will get to talking about the inside of this radio. Okay. All right, so now that we've got this thing apart, let's go ahead. <clears throat> All right, so now that we've got this thing apart, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of point out some things inside here so you know what you're looking at. So first of all, these are the two gimbals. Obviously, um, you can tell by where they're located and uh, you can flip it around and kind of see that. And you can see how they uh, orient themselves and how they work inside here, okay? Um, you can sell, tell that there are springs on some of them that cause there to be tension in the gimbal. And then this one, which is our throttle gimbal, um, actually has these two metal bars here 
which cause it to be, uh, that's what causes this tension uh, in, the, in the throttle gimbal. One bar is for detent, which is this bar right here, which has the little notch here. And all that notch is doing is touching a little arky looking piece um, that has b uh, ridges on it. And then the other one right here is actually smooth and it's touching another piece of plastic that's look, that looks like an arc that is, uh, that is smooth as well. So we're gonna use both of these to get the desired effect that we want. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of the detent first. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna loosen this Phillips head screw right here on the outside, the one with that little tiny bit of uh, that notch. So we're gonna loosen that up and we're gonna loosen it until we have no more detent. So it's almost there and now it's com completely gone. Maybe one more rotation, okay. So it's completely gone now. Now the gimbal's a little bit floppy, so what I wanna do now is I want to tighten this one, which is going to give us some tension in the gimbal because it's putting pressure on that arc piece, okay? But before we do that, we need to talk about lube. So there are a couple different types of lube, and obviously this type right here, which is in this giant gun, I'm gonna show you. Um, this is called red and tacky, but I don't, uh, you don't, I don't recommend it just because it's such a big amount. This is like, I don't know, 12 ounces or something crazy or 18 ounces. Um, yeah, but it's 14 ounces. Sorry. So it's huge, but you can use white lithium grease. I have used all kinds of things like, um, I've used butter in the past, I've used margarine, I've used olive oil, I've used motor oil. So it really doesn't matter, but I can tell you that a lot of that stuff that I've used has worn out, um, and the white lithium grease and this now that I've tried red and tacky stuff seems to work really well. Uh, I just don't you know, recommend anyone just going out and buying this red and tacky unless they already have it, but you can pretty much use any lube that you have that is a... Uh, either lithium or like a synthetic lube. You could even use a petroleum lube if you wanted to, but something that's a little bit thicker so that it's gonna stay in here. Um, the best way to apply this stuff is to take these four screws off completely and then apply it onto the actual smooth plastic piece underneath here and then put this back on and then tighten it down. And obviously you're leaving the detent one loose, but you're just putting the screws back in and then you know putting tension on this guy. And these, uh, obviously these gimbals are uniform and then this thing can go on this side too. See these little holes over here? So this is like, you know, it can be set up for whatever mode you want. So it doesn't matter if you buy one radio and you decide, oh, I wanna fly mode one, but I bought a mode two radio. You can literally take this and put it over here. And this is pretty uniform with all, all gimbals and all radios. They're not gonna go make a specific gimbal and a specific radio. This is just a gimbal, the exact same thing, and they flipped it over and put it on this side. So, you know, get that, uh, don't freak out if you ended up buying a mode two radio and you need a mode one or something like that. So, um, yeah, so we tighten this guy down. We wanna put some tension on the gimbal and how much tension do we want? Well, we want enough to where it's not sticking. See how it's kinda, I'm putting even pressure on it. It's kinda sticking its way through. So I probably wanna loosen it a tiny bit. I put a little too much pressure on there, I guess. So. It's pretty smooth right now and you you know you can wear this lube in to try to get it to stop sticking because usually right when you put it on it needs to be flipped a couple times otherwise you're gonna put this thing back together and it's not going to be the same desired uh, tension that you thought it was because the lube moved out of the way or something happened so this is really smooth right now um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that just because I think it's got enough tension, it's holding it. It's slightly sticky, but I think it'll wear in over time. Um, and then now we're gonna talk about gimbal tension. So you have three gimbals that you can uh, change tension on. Obviously, well, your fourth is your throttle gimbal, but we've just, attend we've just uh, taken account how to do that with this uh, little push down piece. But these other guys use springs. Um, and what you're gonna need to adjust that is actually a 1.5 millimeter driver or a, a, a similar Allen key. And you're gonna go in here, and there's actually a hole right here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a hole right here, right next to the spring on all of these gimbals. So there's three, there's two over here, and there's one over here. You can actually put a spring on this one if you wanted to, but it doesn't have this bar. There's a bar that it's missing that would go right here. You can literally take it and put it over here. Like I said, these gimbals are completely swappable and everything about them is the same. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in here and if you turn this thing counter, or if you turn this thing clockwise, it's gonna loosen the spring. And I always start with my springs as loose as they'll go. So I uh, turn this thing clockwise as loose as it will go. And what's that? What that do? What's what that's doing is it's lifting this little tiny traveler piece under here, and it's causing the sprint, the spring tension to be super, super slack. So I'm fully as loose as it will get. You can see how floppy it is right now. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this guy in here, and I always go by turns of the actual screwdriver. So I'm as tight as it'll get. Keep in mind your orientation to your screwdriver, and we're going to go one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Seven is usually a good start starting point as far as where you want uh, your gimbal tension. So it's a it's a lot stiffer, but it's still pretty loose. Like I said earlier, we want our gimbal uh, with our throt with our yaw and throttle to be a little bit tighter. And I'll talk about that why in a second. So I'm gonna add two more turns. So we're at nine now, and that's. That's about good. I would start with like nine and then you can adjust it. If you need it tighter or looser, then you can adjust that. So why do we want our gimbal throttle or our gimbal stick tighter than we want our aileron and elevator sticks? I mean, obviously this is all personal preference. I'm just giving you what I do. Um, because when you're moving up and down on the throttle, it's very easy to accidentally put in a yaw input. Um, and the tighter it is, the harder that's gonna be. And it's very important that when you're flying, uh, especially FPV, that you keep your throttle and your yaw uniform or at least you know how to couple them correctly and if you're blipping the throttle a lot you're going to be moving up and down and it's going to be very difficult to not put yaw inputs in when you're uh, learning this stuff in the beginning so just keep that in mind um, the tighter your yaw is the harder it's going to be to put in throttle um, and eventually you probably want to loosen that but in the beginning maybe having a tighter gimbal uh, on your yaw is actually better because it, it stops you from creating uh, a bad habit of adding y'all in, or at least it gets rid of the habit of doing that in the beginning by forcibly stopping you from putting it in. So on the actual aileron and elevator sticks, we're gonna do the same thing. There's a hole here, and there's a hole here, and these holes are going to be uh, you know, where this screwdriver goes, and we're gonna go ahead and tighten that, or sorry, loosen it all the way by going clockwise all the way until it stops, making sure it's you know as loose as it'll go and we didn't go tight. So it's as loose as it'll go. I'm not gonna do it because there's no reason for me to do it. I just showed you how to do it there. Um, and then we're gonna loosen it or counterclockwise, which is technically tightening this spring um, by pushing this thing away down here. Uh, and we'll go seven rotations. So seven full rotations. And then once we get there, and we want these to be equal. So, you know, seven rotations, seven rotations. Check it on the backside. Make sure it's feeling pretty good to you. Um, and then obviously I would flip the radio over and kind of do this on it and feel it and feel what you fly with however you fly and be like oh yeah that feels pretty good or hey this this throttle gimbal is not exactly as tight as it seemed when it was upside down so that's a big thing like actually the throttle gimbal doesn't feel as tight as i want it to feel now that i flipped it over so you might do that a couple times end up flipping this over and then you know checking it but right now these things feel pretty dang good so i'm gonna just say hey that's how i want it set up and again, we're just gonna put this back together. Uh, same thing, same way it came apart, and you should be good to go. So thank you for joining me in this radio gimbal tension tuning tutorial, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, and thank you. I'm sorry.